Morning. So we've got on board with us uh, the chairman and MD at REC, Mr. P. V. Ramesh, joins us on the phone line right now. Mr. Ramesh, afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and speaking with us. And you know, my first question's got to be the analyst concern, and they remain pretty concerned and worried about the asset quality issues because of your high proportion of recast book, and you know, also due to the private sector loan exposure. What's outlook? Uh, what's your outlook here? I mean. How long do you think that the asset quality stress is going to weigh down your balance sheet? Good afternoon and thank you for having me here. And um, we have the best of track record in uh, our asset management. We have the lowest um, NPAs uh, among the peers. Um, gross aggregate uh, NPA is 2.4 percent of our loan book. and. Uh, you are saying our assets are stressed and uh, I mean I didn't understand because I thought uh, you had an impressive performance in the past uh, financially uh, with uh, 82,000 uh, crore project approvals and 58,000 crore uh, disbursements and representing a growth of 28% over the earlier year and with a, with a profit after tax. Uh, grown at 11% at uh, 5,200 crores. So overall, uh, REC is on a growth trajectory and we have uh, our NPAs uh, strictly under control. Uh, our um, uh, restructured assets are uh, declining and uh, I, I'm not sure you're referring to REC or some other organization. No, I'm talking about REC and I'll tell you why I'm, uh, you know, a little worried about that because uh, at a time when, uh, you know, as per the IRBI norms, if you do move to 120-90 DPD, I understand that your NPAs as well as provisions are bound to rise or do you differ on that view? No, no, we very strictly adhere to the RBI norms. Uh, uh, beyond RBI norms, we follow very uh, scrupulous, diligent uh, uh, prudential norms, uh, we, we are strictly in compliance. I mean, I am I, sure that you are mistaking for some other organization or organizations. I mean, uh, let me be very clear, we are in uh, harmony with uh, the, the, the best practices uh, that are in vogue in this country and potentially abroad. And certainly we are in compliance with the RBI norms uh, in terms of uh, defining what is uh, non-performing effect and what's the first effect. So, uh, so whatever we have classified, we published our results yesterday, we would have, see, would have seen that. And Hi, Mr. Ramesh, this is Nantara joining you from the New Delhi studio. So let's pick up from what you're saying. We're not mistaking you from another, for another organization, but if I were to put it very bluntly, what do you think and why we have seen a divergence between the REC and PFC asset quality, my producer just telling me we seem to have uh, lost that connection uh, with REC. We'll try and reconnect with the chairman. A lot of questions we want to understand, especially the divergence between the asset qualities as reported by REC as well as PFC. We'll uh, reconnect with him. Till then, back to a conversation that we were having with the top boss of REC. Good to have you back. I hope you have on a better connection this time round. Mr. Ramesh, this is Nantara joining us in the New Delhi studio. We were talking about uh, the asset quality, the NPAs, etc. You said uh, that perhaps we're mistaking you for a different organization. I don't think that is the case as, at all. But I think what the street is also confused about is the divergence that we're seeing in the kind of asset quality and the procedure followed by you and let's say another organization like uh, PFC. So why is this divergence there? No, but you'll have to organize, uh, ask the other organization or the organizations as far as we are concerned we follow the norms and the uh, guidelines uh, and the requirements stipulated by uh, the Reserve Bank of India, which is the regulator, as the NBFC, and we have been following it accordingly. So that's why, uh, as you could see, uh, among the, all the peers, whether not just those in the sector, but in any other sector, whether it's banks or NBFCs, uh, our NPAs uh, are among the lowest. It's 2.4%. Uh, the, the gross NPAs and the net is 1.6 uh, and uh, no I mean and nevertheless I mean though they are low we are concerned about them that's why that's precisely the reason 
why we've set up a special team in-house. Uh, we have analyzed each of those um, uh, projects carefully. We've deployed special teams to monitor them. We are taking every possible measure to see that these become standard assets again. So as far as REC is concerned, we are on top of these matters. Number one is we contain such infection. Uh, we monitor our projects very closely. We don't let them strip, slip back uh, into... So Mr. Ramesh, uh, you know, if I could just come in there, 2.4% gross, 1.8% uh, net NPAs. You also spoke about how there's an internal team that's uh, looking into each of these NPAs. So if I could prod you further on that, what have been the findings of this internal team? What are you at REC going to do so when you're back next quarter here on ET now, you're able to report a better asset quality even though it is on the lower side when compared to industry? What, what, what is your action plan? Let me also uh, mention this, that uh, you know most of these projects, or virtually all of them, uh, are, uh, are consortium lending uh, enterprises. Uh, there is, we are part of a group of financial institutions that have chosen to take an exposure. Uh, in very few cases, we are the lead lenders. Uh, most of the cases, there is some other financial institution that is uh, leading the consortium. We are working in the, uh, uh, in the JLS mechanism. We are working with the lead lenders. We are working with the other, uh, other members of the fraternity uh, to find uh, uh, solutions to them. I mean, we are, we are working with the promoters to see that uh, they do their part of the bargain. Okay. Uh Mr. Ramesh, you know, just for the benefit of our viewers and investors who are watching us right now, noted brokerage like CLSA says, and I'm just going to quote their note on REC's performance, they're saying that the restructured loan book is large at 12% of the total, um, up to about 20% on a sequential basis, and therefore they're saying that they would watch out for the pressure in the private sector loans. Would you say that CLSA's concerns are completely unfounded then? No, we have, no, we have, no, we take we, we take their advice uh, very seriously, and uh, uh, we are we are very conscious of this fact. I mean, in the uh, the stress assets category, uh, as you could see, that we have reduced in the public sector, in the government sector, and especially in the state of UP, from 12,000 crores earlier year, the 1516, the 1617, it's declined to 10,000 crores, but it's still high, and the private sector has. Uh, has not grown substantially, it's grown marginally. The overall, yes, of course, I mean, there's nearly 22, uh, 23,000 crore uh, in this restructured uh, category. Those are the projects we have kept under a close watch. And here again, let me clarify that all the uh, private sector projects, again, are, we are consortium lenders. We are with the group. And uh, the government of India, and especially the Ministry of Finance and our own Honorable Minister is leading this process to address these issues. I mean, there's a, there's a meeting that's going to be convened very soon uh, and then to precisely discuss and find uh, solutions to this and solutions that are sustainable uh, and solutions that are in the larger good of this country and particularly with the ambitious goal of the government to provide power for all in the shortest possible time. Moving to 90 DPD? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so then what would the impact be? Oh, let, let's see. I mean, uh, well, let, we, we, I mean, I can assure you one thing, uh, that in the, in the, in the six months time frame, we will see that most of these assets, which are in the restructured category, are, uh, are graduated to the standard uh, category. I can assure you also that no further projects slip back into this category. So uh, we, there is a robust growth uh, that uh, REC has been uh, maintaining, and then we we've grown 28 percent. We uh, we hope to grow much faster in the coming year, in the current year. And given the overall uh, dynamism in the uh, the transformational character that you are witnessing in the power sector. Uh, the REC is at the center of that 
uh, that process uh, we are, i mean we are, we are concerned yes like everyone else we are concerned i mean even even as a little taint uh, affects all of us and uh, if this is a national asset we all are working to preserve nurture and promote the national interest okay okay mr ramesh great speaking with you thanks much for all that clarity and thanks much for taking the time out and speaking with us today on etna